version of unbelievable sport because the spiked out motorcycles in this first story don't have brakes they can only turn left and they're super fast on ice don't believe me well take a look john the mountain man grant is a world-class motorcycle racer nearly every weekend he fires up his state-of-the-art speedway bike and risks his hide by going as fast as he possibly can on slick, cold, hard ice. As long as you're doing it right, you're not going to fall down. you got to use the power and speed to get it out there and then use the throttle to keep it there. The truth of the matter is that we get as much or more traction out there as we do on the dirt with these special ice studs. They're made especially for ice racing. On the top head here, they're dished inward and have a sharp edge around the whole outside. These tires spinning will cut through your leathers and your meat and be chiseling on your bone in about two seconds. We use our foot kind of like a third wheel. Oh, it's just a good feeling. And if you like to get crazy, it's scary. This weekend, John has come to the America West Arena in Phoenix, Arizona for a crack at the national championship. the indoor thing from the lights and the enclosed and i think it's pretty intense tonight we'll see the crowning of two national champions one in speedway motorcycles and the other in quad runners oh the quads is a whole nother game it gets to be quite a fiasco out there is the only competitor tough enough to enter both divisions. I think there's probably more tangles and crashing in the quads just because of the nature of how crowded it is out there. But the, when the motorcycles crash, they're more often hurt. Race promoter Gary Densmore has truly seen it all. You never know what's going to happen. Predicting a winner in our sport is practically impossible. It's just the unknown, the excitement, the speed, the thrill. When there's a big crowd, it's infectious, and it goes right down onto the racetrack, and the riders get pumped, and it's just an awesome thing to see. like watching ballet on machinery. Other times, it's like watching mechanized mayhem. The race for the national championship begins with a series of four-man, four-lap preliminary heats. These will determine the starting positions for the crucial single elimination races to come. bikes are powered by sleek 500cc four-stroke engines that run on methanol and nitro-methane fuel. These bikes are capable of going from zero dead stop to 60 miles an hour in about three seconds. Weight ratio per horsepower, we outclass an Indy car. And there's another very good reason why they race so far. In speedway racing, the rule is no brakes are allowed. Yep, you heard right. The only controls on these machines are throttle and body English. That's it. <laughs> you can't go fast hitting the brakes. And I've never really wished I had a brake, but there's lots of times I wish there was a lot more padding on the walls. The mountain man places high enough in the qualifying heat on his bike and his quad to reach the semi-finals in both. I built the 900cc Nightmare two years ago. It's probably the fastest quad out there without a doubt. There's a lot of riders that really envy me, and then there's a lot that think I'm crazy, and they're probably right. It's time to let him rip! John lines up for the quad semis knowing that only the top finishers will make it to the final. Starts are pretty intense. When you go, if you don't breathe right for a few seconds. <laughs> is 
wind is heating up now and tempers are running hot. Anything can happen. A big bunch of it's pure lady luck. And with a little bit of luck, John is able to avoid the pileups and squeaks into the quad final. But there's no time to rest. The bike semis are the very next event. Right from the flag drop, John jumps into the lead. And they're out, the mountain man, John Grant. John Grant's in control right now. Whoa, ouch. Despite some crack-ups behind him, John continues to lead the pack. Remember, only first place counts. the bike semi to advance to the final, but the strain of racing in both divisions is starting to show. 25 minutes, the mains are up and I'm wet. <laughs> John starts the quad final in the back row, and off the line, he's trapped at the back of the pack. We've got a good lap. But luck is on his side. A three-way pileup in front of him allows him to manoeuvre into third place. John holds on with everything he's got and is relieved to finish in the money. But the effort of so many heats has almost totally worn him out. Number four, the mountain man, John Grant, who just came in third place. So he is on the podium for the quads. Let's see if he can make it onto the winner's stand for the bikes. The bike made of it. The bike final features some of the most accomplished ice speedway riders in the world. Let's in second place. John does his best to fight for good position, but this race, it's for all the glory, and every rider gives him everything he's got. With a combination of experience and skill, John manages to move up into third place. He decides to set on moving up again when, finally, his luck runs out. A broken chain has left him stranded in the far turn. There's nothing to do now but to stand by and watch the winner, Gary Ackroyd, take a victory lap. Even though he finished in third place, any night of racing is a good night of racing for the mountain men. Awards just aren't measured by trophies. Did you guys have fun? Yeah! Me too.